professors and our guests tonight. I'll make it happen on to uh, be too prolix for this week. She knows eight to ten minutes. I need to tell you why I love what I do. When I walk into patients' rooms every day, I tell them, my name is Andrew Lopez, I'm a registered nurse, and I'll be watching over you until the end of the day. And once I make that statement, that person could be my 60 year old mom, that could be my wife, Melanie, my mother would be my daughter, Anna. From that point on, anything that's going on with that patient, I need to know about. If they're in pain, if they're feeling a little weird, if they're trying to get tested to the doctor, trying to find out what's going on with the test, I tell them, I'm the person to talk to. Come to me, you'll have my full attention. And I think, how many people in their daily jobs get to touch the lives? Well, teachers. In my case, I have people who come in, they've just been diagnosed with cancer, they just had heart attacks, they just come out of data surgeries. When you're in a hospital, they don't put you there because it's a hotel and it's a place to stay. They put you there because you're seriously ill. People have questions, they have issues. And hospitals can be a very scary place for someone who's not familiar with the healthcare system. It's my job to go between them, the doctor, and the hospital to say, okay, this is where you are. This is what's going on. You've all seen the typical Florence Nightingale, um, the lady with the lamp stereotype. Uh, I'm not her. <laughs> but I get all that I've seen. Um, the media really doesn't do much about this. Issues that I deal with on a daily basis, I don't know what I'm going to walk into. And I love it. Because that's to be prepared for anything. The last time I worked, I had a woman who was on hospice, meaning that she was at the end of her life. She was a chronic CSPD patient. She was oxygen dependent. She not breathe on her own. She was uncomfortable. She was in pain. And the family was surrounding us. And their family saying, oh, just twist. She must be in pain. I said, okay, here's more morphine. And their families have a hard time letting go. You can have patients who, patient already knows, it's my time, I want to pass away to keep you comfortable. And that family members that say, do everything. And I looked at people and they said, your mother signed this living will. No respirator, no feeding tube, no IVs. I don't want this. I tell them, you want everything done? Why are you torturing your parents? And it boggles my mind. But I know that I'm doing the right thing. I argue every day with patients, with doctors, with family members. I advocate for my patients. I tell them at the end of the argument, no matter what the result, it's okay. I know. I know this is what you want. I know this is what you need. This is what I'm here for. And a lot of them appreciate it, and you know, then when they leave, the next day you get a candy basket or a bunch of flowers, come into the unit and thank you so and so, and we appreciate it. However, I didn't go into it for, what you call it, for the money or for uh, the prestige of being a nurse, um, regardless of what you've seen on General Hospital, it's not that uh, glamorous, I don't sit around. Now hang out at the table. Oh yes, doctor, like some more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen. But I take my job very seriously and I encourage more people to go into it. We're into a different time now. It was back in, in the sixties and seventies. There are basically three occupations that women can go into with the teaching, secretaries and nurses. And nowadays there are a lot more options out there. We go to law school, we go to medical school, um, numerous options out there. So, when you're talking to people and the topic of nursing comes up, and it always comes up, how many people in this room have had, uh, been sick themselves or had a family member in the hospital this year? Appreciate your nurses. They're not there to take care of you, 
but they're there to do their job, and they're going to do it to the best of their ability. And I can't say that it's a picnic when I walk into the forest, when I go to my work. I know that I'm there, and I get to yell at, and going to have patients that may not appreciate everything that I do for them. And we have one, two, three, four, five people lined up screaming for pain medication. And I'm going to have to tell three or four of those five, all right, you have to wait. But I know in the end, everyone gets medicated. Everyone gets what they need, even if it's not exactly when they need it. And of course, all some people can see is what's right in front of their face. We realize that. We deal with it. And after doing this for 10 years, working in hospitals, emergency rooms, nurse units, long-term care, rehab, I can't see myself doing anything else. Even with all the experiences that I've had, I know that there's more out there to be experienced. Every day is a new day. Every patient I deal with deals with it in a different way. They deal with pain, they deal with disease, the family members deal with it differently. Being a nurse is anything but boring. I compare it to plumbing very often. You pay to fill what you do. It's physical. There's a lot of labor involved, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You see, Jake. And at the end of the day, you can see what you've done. I leave work every day saying, I made a difference in that person's life. Their day was easier because of me. I know when I come back tomorrow, they'll be back. There'll be new issues, new challenges we can deal with. And I thrive on So next time you're talking to someone, and it could be a high school kid, it could be a person that just got laid off from Merck or Bristol Myers Squibb or some Fortune 500 company who's thinking about a second career, tell them, have you ever thought about nursing? It's not for everyone. You don't go into it for the money because even though the money's good, it's really hard work. But it's the toughest job that you'll ever love. And so it's my 